sitting in his How car holding hands. Criminal. Lou, why don't you just walk away from this one tonight? And do what? Go home and relax. No good, Kate. I'd just stay up all night thinking about Hubbard. I'd just soon eat my gut off making a buck. Why? It's just a two-bit divorce case. Helps to pay the rent. How's your mother? About as good as you are. Not too hot. Take care of her. I will. 
I'll see you tomorrow. Kate? Yeah? You okay? I'm fine, Lou. One of us has to be. I'll see you tomorrow. Worthy of note are these comments by Nina Honeycutt, widow of the slain police officer. I know Frank Hubbard. I sat through every day of his trial. I could feel the hate and the contempt that he has for the world and for everyone who lives Nobody in it with him. Nobody knows you, Hubbard. She's got your pig. Yeah, yeah. I hope I'm wrong. I hope he has changed because there are a lot of people out there on the streets living their lives with the same kinds of expectations and dreams that I had 15 years ago. I hope I'm wrong for their sake. Slow down, Kate. You're doing 48 miles an hour in a 30-mile zone. I'm sorry. I'm just a little jumpy. I wanted to be there with Mother when Hubbard gets out of... Now we bought it. Maybe they're not after us. Well, I think I can outrun them. What do you say we give it a go? What do you say we pull over? Eddie, pull over. Driver's license, please. Officer, you wouldn't want to forget about all this and just make it a warning, would you? Well, that depends. Maybe we can talk about it? You missed the point, Romeo. She doesn't have time to talk. License, please. I was doing very well without your help. Lou! Harry! How are you? Pretty good. Hey. We heard about Hubbard down at the station. You tell Davy's missus. That punk so much as spits on the sidewalk, we nail him. You tell her how much we love Davy. You tell her that. I will. How about a favor? Anything, name it. Get Romeo off her back. Drive a little more carefully, miss. See you, Lou. you that I don't mean to hurt you or anyone else. No, nope. I'm a changed man. I have had time to think. Huh. About the trial. You. Sitting there every day. I couldn't keep my eyes off of you. You were so very beautiful. And you know, you still are. Life is full of surprises, huh? I mean, look at us. Here I am out on the streets, a free man, talking to the wife of the man I killed 15 years ago. Here to greet me, huh? Go. 
okay? Oh, I'm fine. I guess I'm a little tired. Your mother and I were in the middle of that game. It was just over at Mom's. She wasn't there. Yeah, I know. I tried too. Thought maybe she might have come back here. Did you know that of the hundred and two men scheduled to die in the gas chamber at San Quentin since California overruled the death penalty that 29 have been paroled and 27 have their release date set? I looked it up. And I'm impressed. But that's not what we're talking about, is it, Katie? Not about 102 men or rehabilitation and punishment or the legal system or good or bad or right or wrong. We're talking about the pain of a little girl who lost her father when a man named Hubbard killed him. I lost a mother and a father because of Frank Hubbard. Well, she was only misplaced for a while, Katie. Misplaced? Paris, Cairo, the Yucatan, 15 years of running away from me and, and everyone after Dad died. But she came home, Katie. She came back. At least she came back to put things together for you and herself. Yeah, she did, didn't she? She's really something, isn't she, Lou? Always has been. What were they like together, Lou? Fire and water. Uh, desert notion. <laughs> he was in the street. And she lived in a castle. Two people couldn't be more different. Or more in love. Oh, she still misses him, Lou. She still misses him. Yeah. He was very special, Katie. He had to be to get your mother. And you're like him. Where are you going? I'm going to go find Mom. Hold on, I'll go with you. Where should we start looking? I don't know. You're the detective. What are you? Oh, I don't know. Just an old curious cop. It had to be you. It had to be you. Zena, maybe it's time to go. I wandered around and finally found somebody who. It's past closing time. I think these people want to go home. No. Didn't we used to dance to that when we were in school? Seems like a million mm -hmm. years ago. Not exactly something Michael Jackson would no. record. <laughs> hey, isn't there going to be any more music? Oh, come on, please. One more, please. Thank you. Zena, I think someone is here to see you. that you're here. Well, come on. This is perfect. Come on, join us. Let's have some fun. Let's dance. Hmm? Mother, it's 2.30 in the morning. Well, wonderful. That gives us the whole rest of the night more. Now, come on, Lois. You always used to be the first one on the dance floor. Come on. I don't think so, Zena. Mother, you should have told us where you were going. We were worried about you. Well, how did you happen to find me? We didn't just happen to find you. We've been looking for you for the last three hours. Well, how brilliant of you to succeed. They are detectives. They are wonderful private eyes. They can find anyone, anytime, anywhere. Did you find Samuel Hudson, the runaway husband? Not yet. 
No, but they will soon. And it's time to go home, Mother. I don't want to go home now. I want to stay right here. I want to have some fun. I don't want to think about what I've been thinking about. Mother, it's been nearly 15 years since Dad died. I'm not thinking about your father. Who then, Zena? Frank Hubbard. I wish he were dead. Mother. It's about time. How long did you guys think that I was going to wait? A gift from a friend. 20000 This is Pinky. Part of the gift certificate. Well, then. This is a nice, warm welcome home from a good friend. Wrong. Welcome home comes cheaper. All this buys is goodbye. What are you talking about? Simple, Frankie. You drink, you eat, you enjoy it. But then you travel and you don't come back. That's an open ticket to anywhere. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I can't do that. I've got to report to my parole officer every Thursday. Besides, it's about $100 a month. That's not good enough for 15 years. This is the deal. You go back and tell him like I'm saying it now. I want half. Half of everything. And then what? And then what? Who knows? <laughs> Life is full of surprises. Thank you. Go to the car. Hey, look, I'm paying my dues. So you go back and you go tell that good friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you have to say, say it. Not like this. Face to face. If you think that I want to see your face again. There was somebody else there the day your husband died. Someone else who was part of it. Someone who drove away and never looked back. What do you mean? Who? You meet me face to face. And you come alone. Or else you're never gonna know. <laughs>
going to be quiet. Real fancy. All right. We're gonna make a move for the door. Just you and me, together. Or what? Or we'll both wind up like a dead fish in this place. Set bail. Well, that's crazy. Maybe, but it's a no-go. Well, then we'll just get another attorney. Well, Kate, we're talking about your mother's family lawyers. You can't buy better, Kate. Nothing you can do. Thank you. No luck, huh? Why can't you get the judge to set bail? Sunday. Machine slows down. Yeah, forget Sunday. Cooper's afraid of the headlines. Rich socialites set free after killing husband's murder. That figures he's up for re-election. He doesn't want to get caught kissing the ring of royalty. Yeah, I'll tell him what he can kiss. What are we going to do? Just stand around here? Mitch, you're the arresting officer. You could give us permission to see her. Yeah, I know that, Lou, but... Uh... Oh, don't tell me you actually think she did it. Hubbard was bruised and beaten. You said so yourself. Oh, I know. You think she punched him out before she shot him. Wait a minute, Kate. She said there was an eyewitness. You've got the description, same as we have. You're both detectives. Find him and she's out. That's simple, isn't it? Well, the least you can do is let us see her. But I don't know. There's three of them. Don't, don't include me. I could be more help on a phone somewhere, seeing what I can do to get Zena out of here. How long before you can set it up? I don't know, Lou. Uh, 45 minutes. Give me an hour, tops. That buys me enough time. Where are you going? You heard the man. There's an eyewitness out there. But I'm not back in time. Give Zena my love. Can you stay with her? The thing is, I don't know anything about anything, Garfield. You're being modest, Henry. If there's anything that goes down in this town with the gangs you don't know about. From a rumble to a purse snatcher. Checkmate. Now you eyeball that real good until you're convinced. You can pay me my 20 on my next pass. He was wearing the skull and crossbones on his colors. That tells us he was one of the Corsairs. 16, 17, good looking kid. Maybe even pretty. You're wasting my time, Garfield. You want to talk to me? Get behind the chest set with a 20 in your fist. I'm a little short of time, Henry. I appreciate your help. You're not to his Queen's Bishop III. There ain't no help here, Garfield. Now, if I knew something which I don't, you want me to tell you which I won't. Because it means me fingering one of my own street people, which is something I would never, ever do. Now, you got to admit, that's not so hard to understand. Check. Now, look what you went and done. Henry, you trust me? Garfield, you're straight. Everybody knows that, even when you were a cop. Now, God, I trust you with my life. My life. Mine. Not someone else's. Now, come on, you know the kind of street law I'm talking about. Okay, fair enough. Just let me tell you where it's at, streetwise. 
Whoever broke into that warehouse saw a murder go down. Someone I love has taken the fall. She didn't do it. Pretty boy was an eyewitness. He could clear her. You tell him for me straight. There's no police beef out on him. He's clean. If he comes to me, I'll protect him. If I have to go to him, I'll tie him to this killing like a pretzel. You tell him. And get back to me. I have little trouble finding you. It's your move. Check me. Hey! What is this? You some sort of show or something? I mean, you set me up and then he collects the 20? Is that it? No, oh, I'm sorry, buddy. I'll pay. <laughs> You're a smart chess player, Henry. Play this move smart and hurry. I'm worried about my friend. She's not having an easy time of it. I will not live with this. I will not stay in this cell one second longer if I have to live with this. You tell him, honey. Stand up for your friends. Don't you I'm warning you, don't be a troublemaker. Trouble? You don't know what trouble is. I know, you're some kind of influential big shot, right? Mrs. Honeycutt. Yes, and I intend to use that influence. Hey, great, maybe you can give me a raise. Conditions in here are disgraceful. Look at these beds, the mattresses are paper thin. The toilet facilities, no one has any privacy. You'll get used to it. It's an outrage. No one should have to live like this. It's shocking. Wait till you taste the food, honey. <laughs> I tell you, I will not stay in this place. Knock it off, Miss Big Shot. What's this? What are you doing? Let's go. Where are we going? Where are you going to take me? You're going to put me in the hole? Is there no free speech left? Are all of our rights gone? You got visitors. Oh, thank you very much. And that's it. That's all that Hubbard told you about it over the phone. His exact words. Someone else who was part of it. Someone who drove away and never looked back. They can't really think that I killed him, can they? I mean, you don't think that they think that, do you? I mean, it's ridiculous. Don't worry, Mom. Why is Lou pacing? What about the boy that I saw in the warehouse? We'll find him, Zena. It'll take a little while. There is something I can do now. Where are you going? R and I. Let them look at the beef sheets. Zena, listen to me. And believe what I tell you. We're going to get you out of here soon. What's R and I? Records and information. He's going to check the file on the case. Are they going to let him do that? Oh, sure. Lou knows a lot of people on the force. I mean, he was one of the best. They'll do it for him. And for Dad. Are you okay? Well, I mean, are they, uh, treating you all right in here? Oh, wonderfully well. Don't you worry about me. I'm making new friends. I'm gaining the respect of my companions. I'm just about ready to take over the cell block. Yes, you are. Don't you want to ask me? Ask you what? If I killed him. No. No, I don't want to ask you. I don't need to ask you. Uh, I know you didn't do it. You couldn't have. <laughs> ask the people who saw me cuff him around on television. They may think differently. Katie, what's wrong? What is it? It's nothing. What's the matter? I think just sometimes I start to cry like a baby. Forget it, it's nothing. Nothing shouldn't hurt quite so much, Kate. Sometimes I feel so dumb and lonely and afraid. All this reliving things about Dad. And you in here.
I never stopped to look beyond my own unhappiness in all of this, did I? If I had, I would have seen yours. I'm just, I'm not good at sharing things anymore. Not even pain. Kate, I'm sorry that I had to run away for so long and so far after your father died. I know that there were many things that I wasn't here to share with you and see with you. But Kate, people do the best they can in this life. I love you. Let's go. I thought you went to the r &I. Never got there. Henry called. He found that Katie was in the warehouse. We'll find him, Kate. He's got to be working one of these corners. What's that? No, Henry, I'm not going to do it. I'm getting out of here, man. I think... Now, Timmy matches the description. Come on, man. Just stay here for a second, man. You fingered me, man. It's for your own You fingered me. It's for your own good, Billy. <laughs> Tell him I only wanted to help him. It's tough trying to help people.
paperwork right away. When is my mother going to be released? Oh, a couple of hours. Maybe three, Kate. Lou, times have changed since you worked here. What needed to be done duplicate requires quadruplicate. It's inflation. It's got its fingers in everything. You guys are very lucky that you found him. Yeah. Billy, it's my turn. I owe you. You have our number if you need anything. I'll tell you what I need. I need out of here. This place makes me nauseous. That'll be as long as it takes you to look at our mug sheets. Identify those hoods. Here we go. Hey. Thanks. Kitty. Anything? I don't know. Take a look. There was a bystander with a camera outside the liquor store that day. He turned the film over to the police. He had about a half a roll left and all hell broke loose. Nobody made much of it. It was an open shut case. We had our guy. What do you see? I'm not sure. What am I supposed to see? This. If I was driving that car, I'd still be reacting to what was going on. You gotta believe it went down fast. I'd be frozen to the wheel. There's no way I'd be able to drive away from there. Unless... Unless I was too scared to hang around. This guy was waiting for Hubbard. He was part of the holdup. That's the way I see it. Someone who drove away and never looked back. What do you say we get this blown up? Maybe uh, get a license number? A real good look at the driver? You read my mind. <laughs> Let's get out of here. I've had it with this place. Well, Lou's waiting in the car. Uh, we've got something to show you. What? Let's see. I don't believe it. We checked the license that we got off the Chevy in one of the pictures. Helen Monster. It was registered under the name of Helen Hubbard. She was Frank Hubbard's wife back then. His wife? Yeah. But, but what about all her efforts to keep him in prison? I mean, she worked harder than any of us. We don't have the answers, but we sure have the questions. Bill, would you please drive me over to Helen Maxton's office right now? Oh, no, there you go, half-cocked. Last time you ended up in jail, this time you could end up getting killed. What do you expect me to do, nothing? This woman was involved in your father's murder. And probably Frank Hubbard's. Murder has a way of compounding itself. We lead, you follow. Look, Katie, I really think this is my... Mother, no! No! Okay. So then what do we do now? How about we pay a visit to Helen Maxton? What do you say, Kate? Oh, thanks a lot, Lou. Could I borrow your lipstick, please? No. <laughs> You said to follow Hubbard, and we did. When a honeycut woman showed up, we knew we had to kill him. Right or wrong? Right. What are you so ticked off about? I'm not ticked off. I just would feel a whole lot better if the two of you were out of town. If you ever need us again. Uh, I know where to find you. Right. who killed Hubbard. Mom, you go after them. I'm going to go settle Helen Hubbard's act. Lou, you got your problems. I got Mom.
must be true to Lieutenant Rojas. Tell him it's Lou Garfield. Tell him it's urgent. What is it, Zena? What's the matter? Boy, do I have a great picture of you. This was 15 years ago, Zena. I was young, high on drugs most of the time. I didn't know what was going on in the real world. I married Frank Hubbard because he could keep me with enough to pay for my habit. And you didn't care how he managed that? No, I didn't. I didn't care about anything but what I needed. How dare you? Your needs, your life, your world. There are others of us out here, you know. We're not just things for you to use or misuse at your convenience. Didn't you ever think of the wreckage you left behind? Don't you care? Who the hell do you think you are? Zena, I didn't kill your husband. I never hurt anybody but myself. When I drove away that day, I... I put my life together. I got clean. I worked hard. I... I made a place for myself. A good place. A real important place. Look around. Look what I've accomplished. Frank Hubbard could have implicated me in a murder. He didn't. I owed him. I promised that when his time came for parole, I'd help. I pulled a few strings. I owed him, Sina. Then why did you have him killed? He wanted to blackmail me. He wanted half of everything I have. Half of everything I've built for 50 years. With a little more time, he would have had it all. Don't even think about it. What a wicked man. 
right. You feel better? Much. Oh. Never play piano again. Do you lose, Buckley? Oh. We have a game going at the office all the time. I didn't know she was this good. She once told me about a master's tournament she played in in Leningrad. Thanks a lot, Lou. Last time we talked, we were buddies. Big trust between us. Then you go ahead and throw this ring on me. Now, that's a hustle, and it ain't right. It's your move. Look, lady, I... You're the one that insisted on the 30-second time clock. Now, time is a fleeting. Let's see you get out of that one. Check. And me. Twenty dollars, please. Thank you very much. Watch out, cops. Where else would I learn to play like that? Hey, wait a minute. Where's the hundred you promised Henry for blowing the game? Brother. <laughs> That's two I owe you, Billy. Someone's been making pirate videotapes of my films. Cops and robbers. They could it be someone from your production company? No way. They've all been with me for years. They're my friends. Surprise! Who is this? Never mind. You want her, we make a deal. What is it? Beats me, but we're worth killing for. Somewhere on that tape. It's the key to all of it. It's a film piracy has gotten deadly. I'm Ted Koppel. Later tonight on Nightline, we'll talk about the prospects for a new U.S.-Soviet arms control agreement with the man who signed the last one, former President Jimmy Carter. Tuesday, Vicky's father offers Jack a bribe to marry his daughter on Three's a Crowd. Then look out when Phyllis Diller and Bob Newhart join an all-new foul-ups, bleeps, and blunders. Later tonight, catch Hot Rock videos by David Lee Roth, Simple Minds, and Patti LaBelle on ABC Rocks.